Okay, this is CS2510. Let's just close the Java window. <clears throat> make it me, make myself more comfortable. Week two, lecture two. So today, what we're gonna talk about is basically developing algorithms. So we'll do a bunch of examples. Uh, well, for to illustrate developing algorithms, nested loops and user defined functions. Okay, so the learning objectives are basically uh, number one concepts. Some ideas are uh, top-down development. So, oops. What is top-down development? Uh, nested efficiency. Benchmarking. Runtime, nested loops. So the only language feature today, well, we're going to learn a couple of language features. And let's see. Uh, uh, uh. This up. So language features. are tick and talk, which are commands for timing execution. Okay. And then also, that's number one. Number two uh, is what are functions so a function, a MATLAB function, is a named set of statements stored in an M file. We looked at an example of a function last week when we, looked, when we worked on the temperature converter from Fahrenheit to Celsius, I believe. A function, we have any number of input and output parameters and subfunction an M file and this kind of ties into the area of nesting. An M file may contain more than one function, if seen as an abbreviation for function. The top function is the main function. Well, it's called the main function. You don't have to label it the main function. And the remaining functions are accessible. I can't spell accessible. Uh, only by the top function. I don't have any general notes for this lecture. So, general notes, none. Okay. So let's just look at a variety of examples. And by the way, you want to look at uh, for, I'm not going to repeat this in the sense Look at mat 
TV, there is the set of videos that co comes along with our recommended book, The Insight to Computing. Uh, videos 14 and 15, because these videos, especially video 15, deals with the scope of functions. I mean, the uh, that is the scope of variables in functions. Okay, and uh, basically, well, like I said, I don't want to repeat it, but uh, the basic idea is that in a function, variables used by the function that are not input parameters are local variables. This is a recognized only in the function's memory space. So that's pretty much it. Uh, so let me, I guess let me write that down. I didn't want to write it down. I wanted you to watch the video, but whatever. So, yeah, this is just simply put, okay. So, simply put, um, variables that are not input parameters are local to the function okay all right so let's now look at some examples let me close this and last time where we left off let me close this as well I have an editor open let me close that because I don't need the editor let's get into MATLAB okay so last time where we left off actually in lecture was let me define a script for computing e okay uh, so let's actually make this a function instead uh, so we get into the idea of user-defined function. So function, actually, let me do this. Mm -hmm. No, because I can actually create a function, file new function, okay? So the idea here is, I mean, it gives you a template, nice, uh, very pretty useful. So compute E, okay? So the output arguments is simply E, is input arguments, or let's, I think we did compute E power X, yeah. Uh, so E underscore X, that's right, that's what we did. So what is the number of terms and X value, okay. So here, E to the X is approximately uh, some and the reason why I use the sum function, as you'll shortly see, going from 0 to number of terms, minus 1, okay? Because you want n. If n is the number of terms, well, you want n terms. Since you start at 0 for uh, the power series, basically what you will return is x to the k divided by k factorial, okay? But... Uh, me and then you could it's kind of obvious what the syntax of a function is as you can see the function has a keyword I mean there's the keyword okay uh, the return arguments the name of the function the input arguments this is this the first uh, comments or what do you call function specification if you type help compute e power x as we'll shortly do on the command line you will get uh, uh, this, I mean, you'll get the header as the help, then you have the body and the end statement. So now what we're going to do is simply to compute e power x. Uh, let's see. We can also time the program. So let's use tick and talk. So tick starts the clock tick, okay, and then t, which is talk, tells how much time it took to execute the function. So uh, let's see. E comma a, e the x comma t uh, also returns also returns execution time okay so that, that right there let's do that to can talk whoops okay compute e power x go ahead got the right um, file name okay so it's simple enough that what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna use a loop uh, because like I told you most uh, MATLAB, like I told you in lecture, MATLAB is transform matrix laboratory. It's very efficient when you use matrix matrix operations. So the idea is I'm going to define 
the x to the k over k factorial sequence as an array or a um, row vector okay and then just use the sum command to find the sum so let's do that so what we have is we want uh, let's do this let's call n lin space okay so let's say we want 100 so if you start at zero uh, number of terms minus one you want number of terms so let's say you want 100 terms you'll go from zero to 99 with 100 terms okay and so we can check this to make sure that it does what we want it to do okay so let's see one then 100 then there it is and going from 0 to 99 okay now what I'm gonna do is I call this K so let me do call this K as well then I'm going to say my uh, e sequence is going to be X dot that is raise my uh, every term to the kth power and divide that by the factorial of k. So let me just, um, I actually don't need parentheses, but to be clear, parentheses dot factorial of k. Okay. And then I can just do some e sequence okay so let's just check this in the sense oops I have n so uh, 1 to the n okay divide by factorial of n okay let's uh, let's do some small numbers because I don't want this thing to crash Ten terms. Okay. Then, oops. That. Paste this. Okay. Let's call this E sequence. Is that? Okay. And then sum of E sequence. That's not bad. Okay. So there it is. So this should work. I'm laughing because let's just try a hundred terms. Uh, it's probably a bad idea, but uh, it's going to be compute e power x as let's just tap completion. Compute e power x. Okay, good. As number of terms, hundred. X is one. It's probably a bad idea. X may not as isn't called to blah. Okay. And why is that? So that's not bad. It computed it pretty fast. But then let's see. Ooh. It's because I haven't assigned this. Okay. So let's do that. Let's try this again. That was the error I, sh I got. So there it is. Okay. So that's not bad. So, well, let's see, format long, okay, let's try this again, okay, well, that's not bad, how off are we, so we can look, we can look at an error as e x minus e x p of 1, uh, absolute value, let's look at the percent error, divide by e x p of 1, hmm, 0%, it's exp of one. No, it's not. Well, 
Anyway, give more terms and figure out if we can figure out what the actual error is. One max short is the standard one. Okay, so that's one example of a user-defined function. Let's do one more example. We have only five more minutes. So let's do an example of um, uh, nested loops. In this case, we're going to look at the times table, which is, let me close this. So file new, I think it's a script. Let's see what the question is asking. So the times table, yeah, it's a script. So let's go to file new script. Okay, so script. Um, just prints the times uh, table, multiplication table for first 10 entries uh, for integers, for natural numbers. So I'm going to just do integers greater than 1. Greater than equal to 1, P to Q. P has to be less than Q, right? So I'm not going to time this P input. There's no point. I'm going to ask the user input input P. Okay. Uh, and then let's do a quick little error check using ifs conditionals. Enter input Q. If so, P has to be less than Q. So if P is greater than or equal to Q, uh, disp error uh, P less than Q. P must be less than Q, uh, and then else, okay, uh, end, so, oh wait, give me two tabs here, right there, now, see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, so I'm going to, let's say I want the times table for two, so it's two, four, six, eight, and then the times table for 3 is going to be 3, 6, 9, 12, etc. So instead of going, uh, since I'm going to display from P to Q, instead of going row-wise, I'm going to go column-wise. So this is what I'm going to do. Right? I'm going to say for n is 1 to 10, that's uh, m rows, right? So for m from 1 to 10, uh, for n going from p to q, so I'm going to basically print uh, m times n times m. Okay. So if you think about it, uh, actually let's do makes more sense to do m times n in the sense. Let's say I mean just plug in numbers. So this is uh, 2, P is 2, and Q is 5. Let's try that. So I'm basically going to go 2, 3, 4, 5 as my, uh, like, I'm going to go across my first row. Uh, sorry, across, yeah, across, I'm going to go across my first row, take it up all the columns, then go to the next row. That's my point. So once this inner loop is done, I'm going to say end. Okay. Say F print F new line okay and say in there so let's see let's call this times and then let's go back here say times uh, oh built in okay all right that's interesting so let's call this something else let's call this let me close this I'll rename this. I think the function work will work. I don't think we need to debug this, but let's just check times table. Okay, times table. Uh, two and five. So yeah, here it is. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, three, six, nine, twelve. Uh, yeah, works out really well. Times table. Okay. All right, that's about it for this lecture. So, yeah, continue working on your projects, and I will see you next week.